Hello everyone. In this video, I will go over my solution to the problem named roof construction taken from today's code forces round. This problem is an excellent problem which teaches us how we can find the minimum value of the maximum value of the bitwise or of adjacent elements in a permutation. And we basically need to minimize the quantity. So we need to construct a permutation consisting of distinct integers from 0 to n minus 1 such that the maximum value of pi or pi plus 1 is minimized and basically this will teach us how we can use some Zor properties and how we can think constructively in order to create any possible permutation in which the maximum value of the bitwise or of adjacent elements is minimized. So let's say for example we had n is 2 then in this case for n is 2 we know that the only permutation which is possible is either 0 comma 1 or 1 comma 0 and in both cases the ZOR of the two adjacent elements is 0 ZOR 1 which is 1 and that's why either 0 comma 1 or 1 comma 0 will both be correct. Now if you add an array with three elements this means that the permutation should be 0 1 2 or any of the six possible arrangements of 0 1 and 2. So in case we just use the same identity permutation then in this case we know that the maximum value of the bitwise or will be 1 or 2 which is 3. However this is suboptimal because there is a better bitwise or if you choose the elements 1 0 and 2 then in this case this gives a bitwise or of 0 or 2 which is 2 and 2 is better. So this is correct, this is wrong and this is correct. And um, another possible way of getting the same bitwise or is by putting 2 0 1. So even in this case we get 2 or 0 which is 2. So even this permutation would be correct for n is 3. And for n is 4, um, let's basically put the element 0 1 2 3 in a correct order. So when n is 4, we want to arrange these elements um, in, in, an, in an order. And you can verify that um, in, in the identity permutation itself. You can verify by um, calculating the bitwise OR. So if you have a calculator, you can use the programmer calculator to calculate the bitwise OR of 2 and 3 to be 1. And 1 or 2 is 3. So in this permutation itself, we can verify that the minimum value of the bitwise OR um, is is equal to 3 and this permutation itself works so um, those were the examples for 5 you can um, again verify from the solution that this permutation is correct but let's now try to find out in the general case when n can be up to 10 power of 5 2 into 10 power of 5 what what would be the construction for the permutation so in the very general case when n is any number up to 2 to 10 power of 5 the key idea for uh, constructing the permutation is to first look at the elements in binary uh, numbers and to analyze their binary form so if you look at the binary representation of each number then you will realize they look like this or they look in this manner and um, in this case the minimum bitwise or is actually going to be 2 you can minimize it further by arranging the elements in this order because the bitwise order of the adjacent elements then will always be uh, less than or equal to 2 the bitwise order of 3 and 2 is 1 the bitwise order of 2 and 0 is is 2 the bitwise order of 0 and 1 is 1 so in this case 2 will be the maximum value and that actually minimizes the bitwise order of adjacent elements and um, in general if you look at the binary representation of two numbers, so let's say that the binary representation um, contains some ones and some zeros in a random manner. And uh, the key idea for finding the bitwise or of these two elements is to consider the positions or is to basically consider each, um, uh, each bit and to see whether the bits match. So if the bits match in both, then the resulting bitwise OR will be a 0. And if the bits do not match, it will be a 1. 
So in this case, you can verify that ones are there wherever they do not match and zeros will come up wherever they do match. And that's why this would be the bitwise or of these two elements in the binary representation. And the key idea is that to consider the most significant bit, because if you consider the largest bit, which is the largest bit, which is the first bit from the left side, or which is the largest bit in the binary representation, then you will realize that you ideally want to keep two elements which have both bits set together. So you want to keep two elements like this together and you don't actually care about the remaining elements. Like even if they, even if the remaining elements are bad, it's okay because the largest bit will cancel out and there will not be any problem. So the largest bit will cancel out and, and we are going to be fine. Uh, so we need to ensure that the largest bits cancel out because if you look at these two numbers, like let's call this number x and number y, then clearly y is less than x because the largest bit of y is not set and the largest bit of x is set. So that's why it will always be optimal to place the numbers together which have their largest bit set and that is actually the first key observation which is required to solve this problem. So the first key observation is that we'll consider all numbers who have the same largest bit set and we'll keep them adjacent to each other. So to illustrate it with a better example, let's say that we have the number four and this is four in binary and we have the number five and we have the number six. Then the key idea is that we should keep all these numbers, even seven, we should keep all these numbers adjacent to each other so that when we take the bitwise or of the adjacent elements, the, the largest bit will cancel out and the remaining elements does not really matter. So that's the first key idea. We ensure that the largest bits will cancel out with each other and we will keep them together. So if you analyze this in normal decimal, then these numbers are four, five, six, and seven. And the key idea is that we should always place four, five, six, and seven next to each other in this manner. Now let's try to figure out um, how we are going to combine the elements. So we know that if we keep 4, 5, 6 and 7 together, like uh, the optimal arrangement will be to keep 4, 5, 6 and 7 together. This will be one sequence. Then another sequence will be uh, all the bits, all the uh, all the numbers which have the uh, second bit set. So those numbers would be like um, 2, 3 and yeah, 2, 3 basically. So 2 and 3 basically have their um, second bit set. These three people have the third bit set. So that's why you'll keep 2, 3 together. And if you consider uh, larger numbers, like if you consider 8, then 8 has the fourth bit set. So um, you will keep 8, then 9, um, like 8, 9, uh, 10 and so on, all the way up till uh, something like uh, 15, I think you'll keep all of these numbers together uh, in, in a separate array so that when you take the bitwise or of adjacent elements, they will cancel out with each other. And in this manner, we have found out a way to keep adjacent elements so that the bitwise or is minimized. Now, how do we merge these elements together? So let's say, we, let's say n was 15 and we figured out that these elements should be together these elements should be together and these elements should be together. But how do we actually get the final permutation and how do we actually combine these elements? So that will be our uh, second observation. So the second observation is basically in order to combine the elements, let's consider the largest bit. So let's say n is, um, let's say n is 11 for simplicity. So when n is 11, you can verify that um, the binary representation of 11 is 1, 0, 1, 1. So if you consider like 1, 0, 1, 1, uh, this is the largest, largest number 11 uh, or like n is 12. So when n is equal to 12, when n is equal to 12, this means we have to arrange the numbers 0 to 11. And we know that 11, this is the binary representation of 11. Now we know that the largest bit is the fourth bit. And we know that the numbers 8, 9, 10, 11, 
to be together. This will form one block. These have to be together. And we also know that the numbers 5, 6, 7, 4, 5, 6, 7 actually, they have to be together because they all contain the second bit set. Like if you look at the binary representation, 4, 5, 6, and 7, they all contain this bit set, the third bit actually. And 8, 9, 10, 11, they all contain the fourth bit set. And if you consider the numbers 2 and 3, then 2 and 3 will all contain the second bit set. And if you consider the numbers 0 and 1, or if you just consider 1, then like 1 does not really matter, but um, if you consider 1, it should be alone. Now, how do we actually fit these numbers 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8, 9, 10, 11 um, into the same array? So the key idea is that let's consider the largest number and let's consider the bits which is set. So we know that in the largest number, in the largest sequence of numbers, the fourth bit is set. And we know that these, if these elements are placed adjacent to each other, the fourth bit will cancel out and we will get a small number. However, we need to consider what will happen if it's in this order. And if you put and if you put an extra element, so let's say you put 11 and then you put 4 because you want to merge them together. If you put 11, which has this binary representation, and if you take this or with 4, you actually get a very big number. And why is that the case? So why is it the case when you take 11 and when you or it with 4, you get a big number? So the reason is that if you consider 11 in binary, it's 1001, I mean 1011. And if you consider 4 in binary, it's 1, 0, 0. Now, there's a 0 over here. So this is a problem. Because when you draw a 1 with a 0, you get a big number. And you don't want uh, things like this to happen. So the key idea is that for the last bit and the last bit only, we will make sure that we put a 0 in the end. So after 11, we should put a 0. So that 11 or 0 becomes 11. And also, we should not put the elements in this order. We should put them in descending order. So the sequence should actually be 11, 10, 9, 8. And then you should put a 0 in the end. You should add a 0 over here. And then you should put the next sequence of elements, which is 7, um, which is 7, 6, 5, 4. Again, this should be in descending order. And then again, you will put, a, then you basically can't put a zero again. So you'll just put the next sequence of elements. The next sequence of elements is um, three and two, I think. Yeah, it's three and two. So you put three and two, and then you put one in the end. And in this way, you can basically um, arrange the elements. And this order will always work. Uh, the order in which you group the elements with the largest bit together and you basically um, sort them in decreasing order. You add a zero so that the, the value of the bitwise or is minimized. And then you add the next sequence of elements in decreasing order and then the next sequence and so on. So in this way, this would be a valid construction and I'll show you how to implement this. But you should realize that um, the motivation for the solution lies in the fact that if you keep the largest bits together, they will cancel out with each other. And you need to basically transit from one bit to the other. And because when you transit from one bit to the other, the bits won't cancel out and the largest bit will still be present. The largest bit will be set to one. That, that's why you basically ensure that the last element is the smallest element. So the last element should be something like eight or four or something, which is the smallest element with the bit set and that's why when you go from 4 to 3 or when you go from 2 to 1 or when you go from 8 to 0 the bitwise or will still be small and it won't explode like if you do 11 or some other number the bitwise or will become much bigger and you don't want that to happen that's why you take a small number in the end and you zor it with some uh, you zor it with the next element and you will get a small bitwise or so that's the motivation and now I'll just show you the code. So in the code, you could simplify the logic by realizing that what we are essentially doing is we are going from n minus one 
up till and power of 2 some power of 2 because we know that a power of 2 will have the highest bit set and it will have all zeros and we know that when we draw it with some other number like some other random number we will always get the minimum value of the or and the like the value of the or will not contain a large number so if you it, it won't contain as large number as 9 or 0 for example and we know that 2 raised to some power will be the smallest number which has the largest bit set and that's why um, what we could essentially realize from the pattern is that we go from n minus 1 to the power of 2 then we add 0 then we go from uh, the remaining elements like the power of 2 minus 1 and we add the remaining elements in decreasing order and that's all that happens so that's that's what the code will do exactly so in the code for each s case i take in the value of n i store a vector int p which stores the whole permutation and initially is added will be false so is added or uh, represents whether or not a uh, zero is added or uh, to the array or uh, to the vector basically or to the permutation and we need to basically iterate for all elements going from n minus 1 to 1 we will add the element i and if i is a power of 2 so this basically checks if i is a power of 2 if i is a power of 2 and um, and 0 has not been added to the uh, vector then we know that um, we are still in the largest bit and we know that 0 should be added and that's why we add 0 and we mark is added to be true so that next time um, we will not come back into the case for adding 0 and that's why we also iterate for i going up to 1 and this forms our whole permutation and in the end we just print the elements in the permutation so the code is greatly simplified by this uh, last minute observation which I uh, made and you can verify that the code gets accepted or the sa same code so I hope you like this problem and my solution if you had any doubts do leave them in the comments down below and if you like this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up thank you